Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Well, in today's video, we are going to talk about uh, scaling of the Kubernetes cluster nodes. Well, in previous video, we did scale the pods manually and uh, through declarative uh, manifest file replicas and imperative command as well uh, but in the situations where pod scale up to the maximum and now we are getting pending state for the pods uh, means we do not have enough nodes to cater the uh, increasing number of pods so in that situation we can easily increase uh, or scale the nodes that could be manual that could be uh, Auto scale. So we'll see uh, all of those uh, in this lab. So in this lab, let me share my screen. I have uh, wrote down a few uh, tasks that we are going to perform and I'll show you. Let me quickly share my screen. Uh, I hope you can see my screen, right? Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna come here and I'll show you cat task and these are the tasks that we are going to perform first we'll understand uh, how to scale manually and what is the impact how can we know the same thing for the auto scale to do this task we are going to run the voting app the same thing we have the same setup as of now absolutely same setup single node uh, kubernetes cluster <clears throat> and same voting app with front end and back end single replicas. So we'll, we'll uh, increase the replicas of the voting app and we'll see how, we, how those pods would be catered by the single node. And once we have the uh, pending state of the pod, we'll try to manually scale the node and same things will perform through auto scaling. Manually will do through the portal and auto scaling will try to understand through uh, command line. However, both can be done through the portal. Uh, but there are a few bits and pieces that can only be done through command line. We'll see about that. So let's get started. I'm here on this cube zero one Kubernetes service. If I go to the node pool, uh, I have single node right here, you can see. Just wanted to show you there is another option for scale. Earlier, this is the way we can scale, but node pool introduced and now node pool, uh, we, we scale nodes in the node pool. We could have multiple node pools that we discussed in the very first lab of this series. So if I click on the scale, it will, uh, it will call us to go to node pools, right? So let's go to the node pools and click on node right here. We would have the option of manual and auto scale, right? We can do from here. But right now as it's, it's manual, one node for two core and eight uh, gigs of memory, right? Let me cancel this, come to this uh, <clears throat> and let me quickly run cubes ETL, before I run it, let me quickly increase the uh, number of uh, count of replicas so that we could see it's not getting created, uh, the state coming as pending. Okay, come on, there it is, there we have the replica. Let me, let me, let me make it 15. Let's go above and let me make back as 15 as well. Uh, we need uh, enough numbers so that we could uh, actually uh, hit the threshold. So let's do this. Now, if I do kubectl apply hyphen f uh, azure vote.yaml. It will, it will start creating the pods for us, right? kubectl get pods, hyphen O, white. You see, <clears throat> it's still creating, let me do this, kubectl get pods, hyphen W, put it on the watch. So a lot is pending, one is running, one is running, 
these many are running. Now, <clears throat> if you remember, uh, we have the same voting app uh, manifest file and we have the configuration for the pod minimum and maximum uh, CPU and gigs. That's why it acquire all the uh, configuration of the single load. That's why a lot of pending. <clears throat> Let me control C here and uh, come here on uh, Kubernetes and here we'll do it manually. Well, it is suggested we always do this through the node pools, not through the scale set. What I mean by that, for example, if I hit two and I'll, I'll refresh it, it will take a few minutes uh, before it will start appearing here uh, and you can see that uh, it will not appear here but we can easily see that in the resource group of uh, which is created by by azure for us whenever we create the kubernetes we discussed that already so let's not get into it get into it better come to the scale set go to instance <clears throat> and you see there is one more uh, creating. We do have the option, right? Uh, we can increase from here as well. Uh, that will work, but it's not recommended. Uh, it is always uh, recommended to increase or scale nodes through the Kubernetes node pool. All right, so if I click on instances, it's still creating. So let me quickly go back to my shell <coughs> and do, Cube CDL get pods. You see a lot many are pending, right? So I just wanna show you one more thing. If I do O wide, here is the information of nodes, right? All of the nodes are zero, zero at the end, you see zero, zero, zero. And which are pending, there is no node available for them. So <clears throat> as soon as the other node up and running, we will see the, the name for the node is zero one. That's how the VMSS works. It just keep increasing at the end. And these pending ports will start creating. Okay, let's quickly check that. Uh, it is still uh, creating, it's running now. Wonderful. Now what will happen uh, as soon as it starts working, now the, the master node or the control plane start talking to this node and uh, scheduler will send information and parts will start creating on this node. So while this is happening, let me quickly get back, not here, but uh, in, on the shell, let me clear this and uh, so many C's for the clear. What was the task? If I see we did this and do it manually scaling the cluster. Yes, let me check the ports. Auto scaling is left, but before we go there, we need to understand this one, right? So <clears throat> we need to wait for a little, little while so that uh, we would have this node up and running. Oh, where I'm typing right here, kubectl, get pods. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right, you see the container creating is, is, is on now. It was all pending. So if I do O wide, O wide, it will start creating on zero one. You can see that now, zero one. That's a, that's a, a manual way of creating <clears throat> or scaling the nodes as per your need, but that's that's not always a good practice. Uh, what is a good practice for the production workload is uh, auto scaling. We should have we should have uh, configure the auto scaling, uh, not even with the default. Uh, interval settings you should have created as per your need because the default can go up to 20 or 10 minutes, maybe not good for you. So <clears throat> what we need to do for the auto scaling, we need to enable just like uh, in parts we did HPA, but here we have to enable the cluster auto scaler. That's, that's not enough because we also need 
to check how we can update it. For example, we enable for like five nodes, then we realize we should have maximum 10, then we can update that as well. Along with that, we can also change the interval uh, of, of uh, <clears throat> interval settings, scan interval settings uh, through autoscaler profile. So that instead of waiting for 10 minutes, it will go and, and scale quickly as possible uh, as per the need of the workload. So let's see all these things in the next video. But in this video, we, we <clears throat> learn uh, how to manually scale the Kubernetes cluster. We'll be working on the same cluster in the next video. Till then, thank you for watching. You have a good day. Bye-bye.